We are live. We're live. All right, let me uh, just wait for something real quick. Let's see if this thing's working. I think we're good. All right. Well, welcome to another Fireside Chat. I'm Instructor Jay with Guardian Training Consulting, and I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about lights. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about lights, not only for um, you know everyday use, but also home defense, self-defense, uh, concealed carry, EDC, uh, weapons, mounted lights, all that. So I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of explain um, kind of two different lights. So you have your everyday lights or your task lights, and then you have your, your combat lights. So your combat, your, your everyday lights are, um, can be a multifunction style light. So it has multiple different uh, lumen ratings. So it goes from like uh, low, medium to high, uh, may add a strobe function, whatever the case may be. So those are, those are just used for um, like every day. So, you know, trying to find your keys, trying to find uh, whatever the, 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 the thing that you're trying to find. Uh, the lights go out in your house. This is how we're going to find the, um, you know, the light switch and the, the breaker. So um, when we get into to like your, your task style lights, um, it can be something as big as, as this. This is like my, uh, this is the one I use on patrol. Um, you know, this is what I use a lot on, on traffic stops. This is a Streamlight SL20L. Um, it's, it's a very good quality light. Uh, it's very robust. You can see it's been through the ringer. Sorry, my allergies are, are really acting up right now. Uh, I promise it's not Corona. Um, so it's really beaten up, uh, just been dropped and, and put through the ringer. Um, I've had to have uh, like a couple um, switch, new switches on this, but the great thing about Streamlight is um, every time that something goes wrong with it, all I have to do is call Streamlight or Skaggs, which is our local uh, Streamlight dealer. Uh, they send, a, send me off a new switch or a new light. Um, they'll, they'll actually just uh, hand you a loaner light. Um, so they'll hand you a loaner light while you're, uh, you're trying to um, do your job. And then uh, you bring, bring the loaner light back and you'll get your light back. Um, so these, this is rechargeable. So you just put it on a, uh, on a charger, slips on a charger, and then um, you're good to go. Uh, so it, it's just very robust light. So it, it comes in a like a high and then it goes to like a medium and then it goes down to a, a low and then it keeps going back up as long as you hold the button. So uh, a great task light. Um, the reason I like it is I can put it um, underneath my arm. I can write paperwork. Um, I can hold it up. Um, and it, it just gives me a good grasp. Um, yeah, lots of good replacement parts. Absolutely. There's a ton of replacement parts for this uh, this this flashlight. So for a street, for a uh, task light at home, they're great because they can just sit on the charger and, and be perfectly okay. Um, so like a task style light. Now, um, you know, these, these Costco, these Costco lights, um, you know, for a task light, i.e., you know, putting in your purse or your, your pocket for, you know, to, to look for stuff or like in a drawer, your junk drawer, these are our junk drawer, uh, flashlights. They're great. Um, but again, these are not professional grade lights. These are like the Costco, uh, style lights that just they're, they're, you're just not going to depend your life on them. You can put them in your uh, you can put them in your uh, your, uh, your something. Okay, uh, you can put them in your junk drawer and, and everything's okay. But again, this, these are not professional grade lights. Um, then, like your the next the next option we're going to be looking at is is combat lights. So um, these are self defense lights. These are professional grade lights. Now. Um, this, this is a professional grade light, uh, the uh, Streamlight. Uh, and then, um, so the two ones I recommend are Streamlight and Surefire. And it's not because I get kickbacks from them. It's because the, of all the light brands that I've used in my career, uh, my, my law enforcement military career, the, these are the two lights, uh, Streamlight and then Surefire, that just really can just take a beating. And again, they back everything up. So if there's something wrong with any of these lights, they, I just call them and uh, they'll either replace the light or the component. Um, so, uh, starting with the, uh, this light here, um, this is an, what is it? A Z, uh, Z2. Yeah. Z2S. This light is a little over 10 years old. Uh, this was one of my first combat lights, uh, getting on the, uh, on the uh, police department. Um, it is an led, uh, it's about 200, 200 lumens. Uh, back in the day, 200 lumens was just like this, like lightsaber of light. It was just nuts. Uh, I still remember, um, uh, the 6P, uh, when it had six, uh, 60 lumens, they, they thought this thing was, and it was an incandescent bulb, they thought this, that thing was just absolutely, absolutely crazy. Um, it's really not. Uh, so 
Uh, this is again, 200 lumens. The reason why I like it, um, the, the combat style lights, is one, it only has one setting. So it's either on or it's off, on or off. And there's no settings like a high medium uh, or, or, or bright, it's just on, off. And it does have a momentary switch. So the reason why I like momentary is I want to dominate with my light. I don't want to have to click on and off and on and off, on and off, kind of like, kind of like this light where it has that constant on and then it has the, the constant off. I want momentary. I want to, when I turn it on, I want to dominate. When I turn it off, I want to, I want to turn it off. Um, so again, that, that's the, uh, the aspect of that. So uh, again, 200 lumens, it, it's a good light. Uh, I think now it's a little underpowered in this day and age. Um, that's why I don't carry it on patrol anymore. It's more of my, like my bed stand, uh, but it's a, it's a really good light. The other thing is uh, it has these, uh, these rubber gaskets. And what these are for is to run like a, a Roger Surefire, Roger Surefire grip. So if I have a, a handgun that may or may not have a, a weapon mounted light, I can run a, a two handed technique, a two handed technique with my, with my light. Uh, so I can search this way. And then when I'm ready to, to go to guns, I can actually index off of my gun. Uh, so uh, great light. And again, it, it's, it just, this one runs off of uh, two CR 123s. Uh, so your higher grade lights are gonna run on a CR 123 because of the lithium, um, it's a higher uh, voltage battery. Uh, so each battery runs on three volts, which typically your, I think your double A's are running on a volt and a half. Uh, so this light runs on two CR-123, so this is what we call a six volt light. Uh, my, my, my favorite light right now, and it's not because I work for them, um, but uh, is the Surefire uh, Halo Strategic uh, Def Light, or the D3FT. Um, there's a lot of science into this light here. Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a project that uh, Travis and Surefire came up with. So essentially it is a uh, E1B backup uh, body here and then a scout uh, weapon mounted light uh, uh, head and then what they did was they actually machined the uh, plunger um, and it is a solid aluminum plunger and it runs off of three volts so it's a one cr 123 so now uh, the, the problem that i have uh, usually with these six volt lights is i've got really small hands um, and uh, the problem with indexing those lights and holding them is when i index the gun um, when I index the gun with the, the larger lights, I have problems indexing the light to the gun. And so when I'm here, it, it just works out because I can, because I can keep capture, I can capture the light, uh, what we call that Mr. Bill, I can actually keep a hold of the light. So, uh, this one right here, the deft light, the D3 FT light from uh, surefire and Haley strategic is 500 lumens. So, uh, it's more than enough. So let's talk about lumens real quick. Lumens. Uh, lumens is the measurement of light at its source. Okay. So this is, and this is why lumens as actually a deceiving, um, unit of measure pertaining to lights, because you, I'm sure you've seen it where you've, you maybe, maybe have had like a 500 lumen light here and a 500 lumen light here. And then you, you shine them and you're like, wait, why is this one brighter than this one? Well, um, because it's actually measuring it at the source, the the LED that's inside, inside here. It's not measuring it at a distance or, or what, you, what you perceive it as. So here's the thing. It's at the source, that LED inside. Now, whatever reflector that you have inside the light, whatever reflector you have inside the light, regardless of the light, okay, that as well as the glass, the quality of the glass or lack thereof uh, for the quality of the reflector or, or lack thereof of the quality of the glass, could cut your light, your light, uh, um, your li your actual light being shot shined out by half. So your 500 lumen light could be actually 250 lumens once it hits an object just outside of the outside of the the beam. So that's why you, when you see, you're like, why is this light brighter than that one? Because the lumen is tr truly not a measurement of the perceived light that's actually being put out. Now, candela is actually a measurement that actually measures the, perce the the perception of light. How much is that, how much light is cut getting outside of the reflector as well as the glass? That's why it's a true measurement. But why do we use lemon? Because it sounds sexy. That That's really it. Um, and they're typically smaller numbers as well. So they're easily manageable. So um, again, this is a, this is a 200, this is a 200 lumen light. 
and this is the five this is the 500 lumen light you can see the the difference and then if you have um like this task light here my my stream light you can see how hot of a center it has okay it's and that's based on how the led is designed as well as the reflector is designed and so not not all lights are created equal and not all uh lumen all the lumens or the big the, the most amount of lumens is the best um there's a lot of science to it um and that's why i trust for example surefire and streamlight because they have laboratories that actually put the science behind it they actually talk to end users like myself like law enforcement officers and military folks and concealed carry people and design lights that is that is usable for for them the end user so um I love this uh, this light. Uh, this is the light that I take on patrol. Um, this is a light that's on my bed. That's by my bed stand. Um, again, I tell people they're like, "Well, wait, how much is this light? Um, this one's around two hundred and seventy dollars." Uh, and people are just like, two hundred and seventy dollars for a flashlight." Again, light. This this thing's been this this right here has been on patrol for, with me for ten years. Um, the only thing that I've had to do with this light is buy batteries. That's it. Um, this one has been with me on patrol for almost nine years. Um, and again, there's been a couple issues with the switches and all I have to do is call Streamlight and they send me new parts. Uh, so again, I always tell people buy once, cry once. Um, so again, it's a, it's a, this is a professional, these are professional grade lights. These are what I, I defend, I defend my family with protect my citizens with, um, again, you don't have to be military or law enforcement to buy these lights. Um, but again, if you're going to be carrying a firearm or having a firearm in your house, you have to be able to identify whatever's coming and going in your house when, that, when it's dark outside. And that's why you have to have lights. So you have th those handheld lights. Okay. Um, so the big thing we have, we, we talk about a lot of is, is weapon mounted lights. Uh, so, uh, a huge, uh, array of different types of guns as well as different types of mountings. Um, you know, there's, there's the, like my Glock 19, which has the, uh, TLR, uh, the TLR seven. So this is a 500 lumen light out of a three volt. This is a three volt, uh, one CR 123 while your TLR ones are a six volt. So you can see how it's, it's not as, it's not as bright. This is around 275 lumens or so, um, longer runtime than the TLR seven. So, um, handgun weapon mounted lights. So this is a huge argument I have specifically with, with law enforcement guys. Um, they think that if you have a weapon mounted light on your gun, then you don't need a handheld light. Um, nothing can be further from the truth. So um, getting back to ocular science, and this is again, using science to uh, bust uh, preconceived notions. So if you've ever, you ever seen somebody scan as fast as they can with their body or their, their, their head, they can only move so fast. Uh, we talk about the El Presidente drill where we're facing up range with our hands in that surrender position, the, the buzzer goes off, and this is, a, this is a standard one where we, the buzzer goes off, we turn 180 degrees face down range, and we draw out our guns and fire two, 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 two on each, on each, uh, on three targets, two rounds, two rounds, two rounds, reload, two rounds, two rounds, two rounds. And that's the standard kind of baseline drill for a lot of, a lot of shooting competitions. Um, you can only turn so fast physically. And what, what ocular, ocular scientists actually found out that your eyes can cicade and cicade um, is the ballistic movement of your eye. Your eyes can cicade upwards of 900 degrees per second, per second. So people are like, wait, wait, you mean it can do 360 degrees in couple, almost three times? Well, no, I'm saying it can move 900 degrees totally in, in, in one second under stress. And chimpanzees have actually been um, measured at over, at over 1800 um, uh, cicades per second. Uh, 1800 degrees per second. That's why they can jump tree to tree and process that much information because their eyes are moving that fast. So if our eyes can move upwards of 900 degrees per second, our body can't move that fast. So what would happen if we're able to move the light almost as fast as our eyes? And so when we actually do transitional shooting from target to target, the first thing that moves is the eyes and then the hands and, and the head. So watch, if I'm here, eyes move and then everything else moves because my eyes can move faster than my body can. So if I'm actually searching, I have my gun here and I'm actually searching here, my eyes, my eyes are actually moving with, with my, my head, with my flashlight. And then say, for example, I'm, I'm over here and my gun's over here. Guess what? All I have to do is come, 
come to bear where I'm at. And then if same thing here, so if I'm over here and I'm searching, and then I can bring the gun to bear this way. So a handheld light is absolutely key. And again, um, wherever the muzzle goes, along again with the, with the weapon on light, wherever the, the light goes, the muzzle has to go. Um, and you may not be, may not want to muzzle what you're, what you're looking at. Um, and again, I, I can only swing my muzzle so fast. Uh, so again, it's a great tool. Um, again, from a, from a home defense standpoint, I recommend it because if I'm trying to grab doorknobs or I'm trying to grab my kiddo, can I, can I still operate this light one handed and the gun one handed? Absolutely. So again, you have to think about how you're going to employ the gun and then how you're going to employ the light and then how you work your environment around the gun and the light. Again, if I have a handheld light and I have the gun in my hand, then okay, now it's getting a little more complicated. Um, same thing with reloads as well. So handheld weapon, uh, handheld, uh, sorry, weapon mounted lights are a great option. Um, but again, uh, this is a big thing that I had to deal with my police department. They're like, well, we're just strap lights to guns and everything's good. No, you have to have a training program. You have to understand how the light works, interfaces with the gun. And then the, there's the, the, how do you switch it with, with your, with your left hand or how do you switch it with your, your, your firing hand? There's a lot of things to think about. Um, now when we get to long guns, so when we get to long guns, uh, for the most part, your, your weapon mount of light is, uh, damn near mandatory. Um, can you run a handheld light while running a, a long gun? Yes. Um, there are, there are definite, definite techniques to run a long gun with a handheld light. Of course there is. Um, but again, is it now you got two hands, three hands almost running. Um, so it gets confusing. So with, with a weapon amount of light on your, on your rifle or your, your shotgun, you have to understand where your hands are going to be because the last thing that I want to be doing is wrapping my hand over the muzzle of this gun. And next thing you know, I blast and blast my hand off. Um, the other thing is the reason why I run a 12 o'clock, uh, I run a 12 o'clock mounting system on here is because I can actually do, um, ambidextrous switching. So I don't want, even if I switch up, um, even when I had to switch, switch up hands, it actually is the same switching. It just works for me. I had to do that the other night. How to do what the other night, uh, Garrett? I had to, you had to run a handheld light with your, your long gun. If that's in fact true, that's gonna, that sucks a lot. Um, so again, it, it just depends on how it works. So if I'm running a this here, I can run it on, when I'm running, running it right-handed. And then the minute I go left-handed, I don't have to change positions. Um, so it just works for me. But again, is your light... Um, bright enough to engage the targets that your long gun could be potentially engaging. Um, so this one's a TLR one HL. So this one's around almost 900 lumens. Um, and again, it's a quality of light. So it, you're going to get what you're going to get. Um, so this is a hundred yard light. I can, I can engage targets out to a hundred yards and see them perfectly. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it just works. Uh, so again, you have to think about what, what your mission skill set is and what you're going to be doing. Uh, so again, this is a specific, uh, carbine that's, that's for a specific mission. Um, of course, if I'm running a, mil a military operation, having a PEC or an uh, IR laser, um, that's an option as well. But again, it, it, you know, I get, I get a lot of guff from some guys who are like, we're running a stream light at a 12 o'clock position. There's so many better lights. I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, but that's all relative. It, this is what my patrol setup is for, for my whole defense. It just, it just keeps it simple. Um, from a simplicity standpoint, not a, not from being stupid, but it's just less moving parts that, that potentially could go wrong. So, uh, food for thought on that. Um, so again, you know, again, not all lights are created equal. Understand what lights you're getting. Um, I always tell people like if you're at a gun store and you're looking at different lights, ask to go into a dark room and start looking at the lights. Um, and going from light to light to light and figuring out the, the throw, the, how much of a hot spot there is. Again, don't take it off of lumens. Don't take it off of somebody that, you know, Hey, I'm military, I'm law enforcement. This is the light that I, I recommend. Um, it, it's just, it, it's whatever works for you. Uh, but I can tell you right now that your Costco, uh, cheap lights are not professional grade lights. Again, task lights, task light, 
Well, here we have combat lights. These are specifically designed for that. And then your weapon mounted lights go from there. So again, um, it just depends on what your mission is and what, what works for you. So, um, and then the, the, the last thing that I, that I can recommend is, is just take a low light class um, to understand the principles of lighting, uh, the good and the bad of, of having too much light or having not enough light, um, how to work a weapon system with a light, not only from a weapons mounted perspective, but also from a handheld perspective. Um, and get a quality instructor that understands what your light can and can't do. And then test that by way of going. Um, so where do you get, uh, Barb's asking me, where do you get combat lights? Um, so any kind of reputable gun shop or, um, or online. I would not recommend buying any of that, that quality stuff um, from, from Amazon because Amazon is the number one uh, fake place. But uh, you can order them through Surefire. Uh, Barb, just, just contact me. I think you know me. Uh, just, uh, just contact me if you, if you have any questions about any lights. Just contact me and we'll, we'll, we'll talk through it. Um, but yeah, you can get them on uh, Surefire. You can get them on Streamlight. There's a ton of uh, distributors out there. Skaggs also sells both of those lights. Uh, so whatever works. Now the, the deaf light you actually have to get from Haley Strategic because they're actually working with, uh, with Surefire on that. Uh, so um, the, the last thing, the last parting words that I have is just get training. That's the biggest thing. Uh, we're seeing more and more people that are getting guns in this world. And that's great. And I'm all about that. But also there has to be a level of understanding about, you know, I've seen more and more people buying guns and they go, I don't even know how to take this gun apart. Well, that, that need, maybe a class needs to happen. We're doing Zoom classes where we do classes just like this, where we just talk and, and we actually talk about the disassembly of, of your particular firearm, then the cleaning and lubrication of your firearm. Um, typically, it takes about an hour and we, I'll go uh, step by step and help you clean and lubricate your gun and learn how it works. Um, we're also doing an Arizona, um, Arizona concealed carry class, a uh, complete virtual Arizona concealed carry class. Um, all for my Facebook people, it's, it's down below. Uh, if, just, if you, uh, don't, you're not savvy to that, just go to www.gtctrain.org. That's our website for Guardian's website. Um, and just, just sign up from there. We're also doing a, uh, online or virtual bleeding control class where we actually teach you virtually, um, how to use tourniquets, how to, uh, use hemostatic agents, uh, gauze and uh, pressure as well as your chest seals to, to potentially save a life. Um, it's great to have the tools, um, but the training is absolutely key because again, you want to be covered uh, from a liability standpoint as well as from a training standpoint to understand uh, the pros and cons of everything that's in this kit. Uh, we're actually also selling this kit here uh, uh, through TACMED Solutions, save you a couple bucks. Um, just go online uh, for my Facebook people. The link is below, and for the um, and for my Instagram people, just go to our uh, www.gtctrain.org, and then you're gonna go through our, our homepage, and you'll see everything where uh, where you need to get that. Uh, so again, get training. Uh, contact us for training. We're constantly doing now. We're constantly doing Zoom training, uh, virtual uh, video conferencing training, where we're just talking through things, and then as this progresses and, and gets. Uh, this COVID-19 kind of dies out, um, then we're going to go from there. And uh, it's gangbusters from there. But uh, just contact us. Let us help you. That's the biggest thing. And then we'll go from there. Try to do something positive for somebody. Uh, be safe, folks. I'll, uh, I, uh, I may or may not see you tomorrow, uh, just depending on my schedule. There's some things that are that's that happening tomorrow uh, pertaining to Guardian. And so uh, we may, may not be able to do a, another video. But if I don't see you, good. have a good weekend, and uh, I'll catch you guys later.